Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. All right, we got this mom, and she's, uh, she, you got to check her out on the BJ and Migs page of KISW.com because her video is going all over the place. Because, uh, well, uh, she, she posted this because of her kids. Her name is Nadine, and she noticed an Uno card that had been sitting for a long time uh, on her hallway floor, right outside of her kids' room. Like she said, these teen sons, there's this Uno card right outside it's, the door of their room. It's like right by the, the door hinge, and it's just sitting there. Yeah, and uh, look, as a gamer, I'm like, dude, you got to pick that card up. I it's, mean, it's probably a wild card. Yeah. There's a game missing one piece. Yeah, I could never <laughs> let that sit for that long. Right? Obviously, these kids do not care. Uh, and she got frustrated. She's like, I can't believe this is like, you know, sitting here for days. No one's picking up this Uno card. So she taped a $50 bill to the underside of the card, and then she waited. And thought, okay, we'll see how long it takes. Uh, and in her videos, she checks every day until the card was finally found after 19 days. 19 days? <laughs> 19 days. Man, I'm pretty, well, you know, if it's an envelope, like a bill or an envelope that's uh, sitting on our kitchen counter, it'll probably go about 30 days before I open it. Yeah. So if my wife put a $50 bill inside of an envelope, that I would probably not notice that. She'll always look at me, she's like... At what point are you going to open this? I'm like, ah, it's automatic pay. I figure it's fine. And then you open it up and it's like some kind of crazy alert that's about to happen. You're like, why didn't I know about this sooner? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> I refuse to open anything that's in an envelope in our house. Yeah, I don't have to pay it if I don't see it. <laughs> I mean, you, you know what? I'm getting a real good deal on electricity right there. Here's the audio of this woman, uh, Nadine, and her whole Uno card situation. This is 50 bucks. This is an Uno card that's been camped out outside my two boys' rooms for I don't know how long, and I'm going to put 50 bucks under it. The objective of this experiment is to see how long something can sit on the floor of my house before somebody picks it up. Honestly, I've lost track. Look, there it is. It's over a week and a half. There's a blizzard today. Been here all day. Who was it? Where is it? Wow. So so she finally found that the card was gone. Was the 50 bucks so that the kids, if they wanted a spider, could pick the, take the 50 off and leave the card there? And oh, she would know that, that would it was be moved? amazing. That would be so funny. I think that's why she did it. Because otherwise, you put 50 under the card. If I'm the, It still looks like an Uno card. If I didn't pick it up before, why would I be motivated to pick it up again? So maybe that's what the 50 was for, just in case somebody tried to pull a move and leave the card down there to be a wise person, but took the 50. Oh, no, I think, I think you're just kind of overthinking it. I think it was one of those, oh, if I would have picked this up sooner, I would have been 50 bucks richer earlier. And then it's, it's the same thing as like, you ever heard the rumor of like, uh, people putting like $20 bills in the Bibles in, uh, in hotel rooms? No. Oh, I don't know. I never heard that. I've heard about this all my life and it's not true at all, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to stop looking and shaking out the Bible every time I go into a hotel. Jesus. <laughs> Here's $20. Yeah, I mean it's just I heard it once and you know what? <laughs> you can't you can't lose or you can't win if you don't play, so I check it out. Jesus. So the idea what is that you will look at the Bible and people just yeah, were, uh, like they were you're upset? being rewarded for paging through the Bible. Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, maybe these kids are thinking maybe I should keep that 50 on there. Maybe every day the money grows. Like who knows? <laughs> yeah, compound interest. <laughs> yeah, just, if I if I keep it under here for another month, it might be $100. Yeah, the Uno fairy came by. This is fantastic. Or is, or is this also a test to see how much of a, uh, a thief or a, a dishonest son or daughter that you have? Because if they if they see the fifty and take the fifty, aren't I mean, why would they, it's not their money? 
Well, or would they have to go to mom and be like, "Mom, I found fifty dollars under this," or are you just going to have to accept that your kid's a thief? I would definitely argue the tooth fairy <laughs> argument. And say, oh, you know what? Look, you flip over a pillow. Next thing you know, there's cash. I flip over an Uno card. It's the Uno fairy. Right. I didn't steal from anybody. Hey, the yeah. Uno wizard. He's hooking us up with twenties and fifties. Yeah, what's wrong <laughs> with that, mom? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Oh, so what's that? I used to do this with a dirty sock. One of my kids left in the hallway floor. I let it stay there to see how long. Uh, they would walk over their own sock without picking it up. It was over two weeks, but it didn't get picked up. It got kicked into my living room for somebody else to do it. Wow. <laughs> but if you put a 50 under there. Yes. I say, I don't know what that proves. I mean, if it they proves fu- nothing. It's just, yeah. yeah. I mean, except you just gave 50 bucks to your kid for being an idiot is what I look at it like. I mean, it's a waste of a good $50, but you could have done $5. Yeah. What I do think, you think? Yeah. I think five is fine. Yeah. 10, 10 maybe. You but know. now with like for fifty bucks, I don't know about you know with inflation and everything or kids allowances or any of that crap. But I mean, Steve. it's just like maybe they'll pick up something else and hope there's money under that as well, and then they're stuck with it. And maybe they'll put it away. Yeah, and maybe we're old, Steve. Maybe fifty is actually like what five bucks. Yeah. Is. No, I it's know. not. <laughs> there's not a chance to, in hell I, that fifty is on the same level dude, as a five dollar bill. Five bucks is a, like a coffee, if that. Yeah, yeah, if yeah, that. I mean, so. if they're going to a bikini barista, I think it's more. Yeah, <laughs> I saw that on TikTok. That's what you need the fifty oh, yeah. for. I saw, bikini, un- <laughs> no, I saw a bikini breeze on TikTok talking about how people complain. They're like, your coffee's six bucks. She's like, I'm serving it to you and nothing. Yeah. What do you want? You're going to have to pay a little extra for this coffee, you idiot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, idiot. Maybe if you had an Uno <laughs> card that it was 50 bucks underneath, I would pay the cost. She right. might have been a little more tactful, but she yeah. was pretty much saying, look. <laughs> yeah, I know, you're really. You're bitching about this coffee being six dollars, but you're here to look at me pretty much naked. What a ha- I mean, does it, 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 he not understand the purpose of that entire transaction. Right. Yeah. All right. You're paying for more than the coffee, buddy. Yeah, you are, pal. <laughs> paying oh. for the pasties. <laughs> and they're ta- oh, pasties. Yeah, not pasties. pastries. Oh, not pastries. Oh, I was say, there's tasty pastries. Uh, we got a guy <laughs> that pretended to be a DEA agent to get a discount at Wendy's. Steve's going to tell you all about this with the Migs Report at 617. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Well informed on the issues of the day? Not this guy. Live from the KISW News Center in downtown Seattle, this is The Mix Report. Well, thanks, you guys, and thanks to Key Up You All for giving us The Mix Report. And today, a very special day. Today, enjoy yourself a peach cobbler. Oh, it's nice. National Peach Cobbler Day. Oh, that's a that's old school classic. Maybe uh, it's a good chance for you to pop it out during Easter. The peach cobbler. Oh, that Excuse okay? Me. Yeah, hello. I don't know. We, uh, yeah. Some people have like little gatherings and get-togethers and things along those lines. So maybe there's an opportunity for you to just like, hey, here, I brought some peach cobbler. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, Steve. Just trying well, to find a reason. You sound very. You sound right. a little bit like, guys. Yeah, I'm maybe, sorry, I brought this. Anyway, through it, I'm like, ah, probably not, my, not many people bring a peach cobbler to an Easter dinner. But hey, today, why not? This weekend, <laughs> start the tradition. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, this weekend, I wouldn't turn it down. <laughs> it's also National Scrabble Day, a game I never play. Yeah, as you can tell with my, I mean, now strong you're command of words. You're a Wordle guy now. <laughs> yeah, when are we going to have National Wordle Day? Well, it's got to be soon. Well, it'll probably happen after they make it beyond a paywall, and then I'll stop playing it, though. That's yeah. the spirit. There you go. I wonder when that's going to happen. I feel like I'm playing on borrowed time. You really are. I mean, well, they brought the rev back in, though. I know, and he was like, he was where, you know, he didn't like corporate America getting involved, and yet, you know, it, it, it didn't take long where he wanted to be part of the, the party again. He really... Yeah, yeah. For now. For now. <laughs> like a true American. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah flip-flops. Because the New York Times is like, okay, keep an eye on that rev. We can't lose him. Well, they it's very to, important. I choose to believe that. They need to keep an eye on a 57-year-old man by the name of David who lives in Daytona Beach who apparently was pretending to be a DEA agent. I am a DEA agent. <laughs> Close. <laughs> so funny you say that because somebody texted about like a DEA agent. I thought it was Keanu saying I'm an FBI agent. That's it, yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, no, his name is David, not Keanu. Now, why is he a DEA agent or pretending to be one? Well, because he likes getting discounts at his local Wendy's. There was never a better reason. Nothing wrong with that, actually. Apparently, he used to get the hookup from his buddy. So he would go there, get a hookup on a discount at, for whatever meal he was getting at Wendy's. Maybe it was the double baconator or the triple baconator. Yeah. Who knows what David wants to do? But his, his buddy recently got fired or quit. So he's like, well, crap. How am I going to get my discount? I'm going to purchase a badge and pretend to be a TEA agent. Wow. And apparently, it was working for a little bit. 
But the problem was at one point, I guess somebody was like, yeah, you're not a DEA agent. And he got pissed at the, the person behind the, the counter, started yelling. The cops were called. Apparently, he was demanding the discount. He even flashed that fake badge. Dummy. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, he's now in trouble. <laughs> dummy. And, and dummy. I, here's what I don't understand. If you're a DEA agent, does Wendy's just automatically give you a discount? I don't understand yes, why he thought that works. Free Frosties if you're a DEA agent. Oh, I didn't, you didn't know, know that. Oh, I had no clue. Thank you, Wendy's. <laughs> when DEAs? Ah, that's it. I don't know. Man. I don't know either, man. I guess some people just believe that, like, you know, when you're a law enforcement, you sometimes get some hookups at restaurants. So maybe he thought, oh, I'm a DEA agent. That's one step above it. Wow, I the boy. Some people, I don't know. some people do have some cojones because I could never do that. I would, I could never go. Hi guys, I'm a DEA agent. Where's my discount? I just couldn't do it. Like there's times where like you know you get somewhere and you're like, hey, are you uh, in the military? And you're like, well, if I lie, I could get like maybe a, I could, I get on the plane before everybody else. But I'm like, I can't do that. Like that's just that's so messed up. You know what I mean? But like there's a thought in your head for a half a second, like, man, it would be nice to get to sit before everybody else. Well, next time, Steve, I'll just put you in a carriage. And oh. I can be part of the families that need extra time to get our kids. Yeah, if you want. Wait, then we can both scan the system. How's that? Are you opposed to wearing a bonnet? No. All right. Good. <laughs> you know, most days I wear a bonnet, BJ. Perfect. So, oh, wow. Especially during the Easter season. Forget about it. Oh, oh yeah. You're yeah, Easter so bonnet. peach cobbler. And they're like, oh, look at this adorable child. You can get on the plane early. All right. Now we need to head to Brazil, where this 54-year-old man had to go to the hospital because, well, he was dealing with a bunch of stuff like cramping, abdominal pain. Oh. He was nauseous. He was Oh. vomiting. Oh. He was even constipated. And they're oh, like, what boy. the hell is going on with this poor guy? They do a bunch of examinations and talk to him and they're like, yeah, we don't know why you're so sick. Maybe we should do an x-ray on you to see what's going on. And that's when they noticed the problem. He had an eight inch long dumbbell. <laughs> do I need to finish the story? <laughs> what? What? He I'm had assuming a dumb- he didn't swallow it. He had, no. he. he he did squats on a dumbbell? Well, I mean, define squats, but yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'd rather not define squats, thank you. And, oh. I, and, and I love in the story, it says, the patient was reportedly uncooperative during the procedure. And yes, the doctor said that the infiltration was of, quote, sexual nature. Oh, I like mm-hmm. that phrase. I'm going to use that next time. Would you like to be infiltrated of a sexual nature? And I might stop the story here because, well, they had a difficult time removing that dumbbell, and I don't get into details on how they had to, uh... Oh! Whoop. They had to jaws of life it? Kind of. <laughs> oh, boy. Wow. The term boy. manual extraction was used. In manual the extraction! Man, I feel wow. bad the term for manual. <laughs> forearm was also used in the story. What? Whoa. No! No, I mean they had to like the, what they do with cows. Hey, but good news, the operation was successful, and he was uh, discharged from the hospital after three days of being there. Discharged, eh? Mm. So somebody really had to had to go where where the dumbbell has been before. Is that the intern, the rookie, yeah. or is it the shortest straw? You and get it's a, like, how do you how do you figure out who has to do that? You get the guy at the farm that does the cows. Because they already have the long, Fair. long bags to put in their arms yeah. and everything, and you know who has to get the cows, Randy. <laughs> like this texture just said, this is exactly why I don't go to the gym. Yeah, oh, that's, that's why. Yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> it ha- you don't. I mean, yesterday I was at the gym, and I, I mean, we saw with my own two eyes. Someone just no. Oh, so, oh somebody just did squats with a dumbbell. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, maybe the Mariners need to do more squats oh, because, yeah. well, <laughs> the losing ways continue. Oh, yeah. They lost 3-2 to two to the White Sox. I mean, it was a nail-biter right to the end, BJ. Yeah, it was. But no, did not happen. They play again at 4 p.m. It is a one-run game. I mean, you know, yeah. White Sox are supposed to be a good team this year. So, I mean, I, 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 I still have hope. Oh, dude. I mean, yeah. if anyone's freaking out now, you definitely have some knee-jerk reaction issues. Uh, you know there are some people freaking out now. <laughs> right. So I, I still have hope for the Kraken, but, hey, yeah, they lost, yes. Man, dude, what the hell is going uh, on with that? I saw, I, you know, the hockey's only two periods now. That's what I'm going to say. And, and please, you know what? They I won wish. the game because after two periods, they were up three to one, and they end up losing the game, BJ, five to three. Granted, oh, congratulations! One of them was an empty netter, yeah. but still, Kachuk wow. had a hat trick. Just why? I mean, they looked up, they looked phenomenal for those first two periods. It was Matt, Matty Benier's first game as a member of the Kraken, the number two pick overall, got an assist in his yeah, first game. First nice. point. He did not look at all nervous out there, man. He was playing great. Like he just had this this guy. I think is going to be something special. I know it's only one game, but <laughs> what the hell? Oh, it's so frustrating, man. Stupid, so, uh, stupid penalties, the penalties man. You're absolutely oh, right, man. Yeah, kiss of death, right there. 
Well, they're supposed to play today, but that game's been postponed uh, against the Winnipeg Jets because apparently weather in Winnipeg is just atrocious. They're yeah, having they snow have days in Canada. Snow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they just said, you know what? Screw it. We're not going to do the game today. We'll push it back till next month. But the next time you can watch the Kraken, and I'm going to be there. I can't wait, BJ, to get to see Matt Veneers on the ice for the first time at Climate yeah. Pledge Arena. And that's happening on Saturday against the New Jersey Devils. Oh, wow. Boy, this is a, this is a mixed bag for you because either way, you're going to be happy and sad. Yeah, no, I know. A few people are asking me like, how conflicted I am. I'm not conflicted. I have a Kraken tattoo on my body. My allegiance is to the Kraken, of okay. course. But obviously, when the when the Devils are not playing the Kraken, I still want to see them do well, and I hope it's a good game. But yeah, of course, I'm rooting for the Kraken. And they're, it's, they're, they're both teams were eliminated. Both right? teams suck, BJ. Woo! All right, that's the spirit. Battle of the behemoths. So it'll be fun to see who sucks last, as the men's room would say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, a uh, quick plug for myself. I don't know if it's airing today. I assume it is, but at some point, myself and Taryn Daly will be. A new Day Northwest. Oh, hey. The show right after the show, heading over to King 5 Studios and get to hang out with the crew at New Day Northwest. That's so, cool. That's always a good time. Uh, as far as weather, 51 degrees. It's going to rain today, thanks to Ann Wilson and Night Ranger as well, over at the Washington State Fair for giving us the mix report. Oh, very nice. Well, uh, <laughs> you guys suck. This just got texted in. Oh, yeah. I'm so tired of listening to you guys bash our sports teams. I'm officially done with your radio show. Bye. Really? Wow. We can't complain. We don't hate our sports teams. Wow. We love them. Wow. So who do we do we bash the crowd? Like, wait, wait. Oh, that signed Dave Haxtall. Oh, yeah. right. For the Seattle <laughs> Sorry about that, Dave. Yeah. It's got service, too. Uh, yeah. Apparently, they share a number. Yeah, that's it. That's what it is. <laughs> it's like sharing a Facebook page. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, if your team is not doing well, you get to you get to come. That's what sports is so great for. They at us for sucking. Yeah, we didn't do we anything. We mad at them for sucking, which yeah. leads to us sucking. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Wait, right. What? I mean, it's it's well, we've. I feel like we've always carried the torch, and maybe maybe we're the problem. Maybe our sucking has just rubbed off. Oh, so we need to do better. We need to do better. That's, That's what it not is happening. Yeah, go over uh, that. Yeah, if, yeah, sorry, sports fans. Yeah, if the Mariners and the and the Kraken need us to be better, this is going to be a very long franchise history for both. <laughs> Uh, but I'm still, hey, I'm still behind the Mariners. I, st- I, I mean, I still have a positive outlook towards those guys. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, just, yeah, I think they're. I think it's going to be a good season. I just, I, I, I'm already like the the, the the nervous Nelly though, because remember last year it was like just a matter of a couple of games would have meant that they would have made oh, the playoffs. Right. So then when you have like these close games, like you guys got to, do I need to come into the dugout and say? In about 160 games, you're going to regret this loss. <laughs> yeah, you know, I can't blame you for thinking that way because I think dude. the same way. <laughs> Every that, game matters. Let's go. I am that guy that does that, even though it doesn't feel like, you know, 100 and all, like, it's just so long, you go, I ah, will figure it out later. But, but then come at the end yeah. of the year, we're all like, oh, if they only could have won one more of those games. Yeah. God, that's, I mean, but there's an extra playoff spot this year, so they got to get in. Yes. Oh, man. Yesterday, Steve, he did get this one wrong. In the standard issue game of Monopoly, each player starts the game with how much cash on hand? A thousand? No. Five hundred? No. Two thousand? No. Sixty-nine hundred? No. You're so close, buddy. Fifteen hundred. That was the one. Oh. All right, I know what you're looking for. Your shot at beating Steve. Well, you got it. Two oh six four two one Rock. We're playing Beat Migs at six forty seven on the Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. What's the difference between filing for bankruptcy and credit counseling? Uh, credit counseling is a is a useful process in some circumstances, but it does show up on your credit. In fact, from a credit scoring standpoint, credit counseling shows up just like a bankruptcy, so it's going to affect your credit as negatively as filing bankruptcy. In credit counseling, the idea is, is that a credit counselor works with your creditors on your behalf to try to lower interest rates or work out payment plans with your creditors uh, to, to pay back your debt over time. Uh, in credit counseling, you almost always pay back 100% of the debt, sometimes at lower interest. And of course, some creditors will participate in that process and some won't. Um, so you're usually left with kind of a mixed uh, result with credit counseling and of course, a high payment. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening.